I had no basis for before all of this, from a military surveillance perspective to zero point energy, gone from somebody who is a healthcare IT consultant to now somebody who is trying to spread the awareness about a fundamental understanding of our reality and of our universe. So thank you all for being here once again and, and listening. I think that everybody being here and sharing this information is very important for disclosure. Okay, um, I think we'll just, should we wait here for him to go or just get going? I think I'm just gonna get started actually. If he jumps in, that's fine. Okay guys, <clears throat> presentation today is on zero point energy. First question you may have is, what is zero point energy actually? So I've got some videos queued up here. These are all from my Twitter account. So if you guys want to check stuff out on my Twitter account after this, you can find all the stuff that I'm presenting here. Um, the clips, the videos from the engineers, and the scientific papers. This is Paul Sizz. Paul Sizz is a black project engineer that worked on hypersonics. We're going to actually review a couple of his scientific papers later on. And here he is back in the 2000s explaining zero-point energy. What that means is that when everything comes down to rest, there's still energy left. It's like sea level in, in, in the ocean. And there is a constant flow of energy between matter and antimatter as it annihilates itself and recreates itself. It, it occurs in stars. All of these big star factories you see now with Hubble is a continual exchange of energy. And although the average is zero, that zero may be a pretty high level above nothing at all. And what Sakharov and some of the physicists said is that it's this level that creates the background for the universe to exist. You know, there are people who have been experimenting with zero-point energy or try to tap zero-point energy for years. Every once in a while, someone will do it accidentally. They'll call it cold fusion, but I don't think it's cold fusion. I just think it's a zero-point energy tap. Except for three people that I know, uh, no one has been able to control it. When it happens, it happens for a short period of time, and it's almost always destructive. It's, it's, a, it's a coupling of, of, of the device with the energy that permeates space. So, zero-point energy, what is it? Zero-point energy is technically the ground state of space-time itself. But if you really dig into it, space-time itself is not an empty vacuum. It's a medium filled with energy. And what Paul Sizz is saying there is that these virtual photons that we've been taught in physics that are popping in and out of existence all the time, that represents an ocean of energy. An ocean of energy that we're sitting on. Then the only question is, how deep is that ocean of energy? And what he was saying there is he references Sakharov from 1967. Sakharov was the first person to propose this idea that zero, the gravity itself might be a fundamental byproduct of this zero-point energy that creates space-time. So our first scientific paper, oh, actually this is a little bit before that one, is extracting energy via the Casimir effect from Robert Forward in 1984. One of the first things people ask me is, well, yes, okay, there's this energy that permeates space-time, but it can't be, we can't pull any useful electricity out of it. Well, Robert Forward would disagree. In 1984, he wrote a scientific paper that shows we can use two conductive plates that would normally just come together, and if we change that into a spring, then we can have our spring compress from the Casimir effect. And when the spring compresses, we can extract useful energy out of that. We can charge a battery with it. Now, the downside to this was that it's not perpetual. So when you argue with people on the internet, they'll say, well, yes, the Casimir effect shows that two plates come together automatically. That seems to be free energy. Where's that energy coming from? But they'll say that you can't do it again because you'd have to pull the plates apart. That requires energy to do that. So what Robert Ford was trying to do after this paper was figure out how do I do it perpetually? So just because we have something called the Casimir effect, which we put two non-conductive plates or two conductive plates next to each other and they will come together automatically. Just because that exists, that does show that we can extract energy, but there might be a different method for perpetual extraction of energy. And as Paul Sizz said in that clip we were just watching, he says, I think cold fusion is a zero point energy tap. So what he's saying is he's connecting this idea of cold fusion. Where does the excess energy come from in cold fusion? It comes from space time itself. 
Also note, he was mentor to Eric W. Davis. You've probably seen Eric W. Davis on these UFO hearings. Robert Forward was his mentor. The next paper is The Ground State of the Hydrogen Atom by Hal Pudoff in 1987. This is Hal Pudoff's first scientific paper about zero-point energy, and I would argue he's the world's leading expert on zero-point energy, but I'm coming for the crown eventually. Uh, the question is, why is the hydrogen atom stable? Why is it we, we model the hydrogen atom with an electron spinning around it? Why does that electron not fly off away? Why does that electron not crash into the nucleus of the atom? Why is it stable? And the answer is because it's constantly exchanging energy with the zero point energy field. There's constant exchange of energy coming from the zero point energy field to that hydrogen atom and being released from it at the same time. That's why it stays stable all the time. This was a fundamental understanding of the universe that Hal Pudoff came to in 1987. The implication is clear. There is an ether of energy that we are in all the time. The same thing that Paul Size was saying in that uh, clip that we were just watching. Fun note, this paper was passed to me via proxy of Hal Pudoff himself when I was investigating the next paper that I'm about to show you, which is also from Hal Pudoff. The next paper that he wrote after this was Gravity is a Zero Point Fluctuation Force, 1989. Now this is around the same time he started working with Ken Shoulders as well. And the next, we're going to talk about a little bit of connection to that. Now what this paper shows is that zero point energy can actually explain gravity. He references Sakharov in this paper and says Sakharov was correct. We can actually take the idea of electromagnetism going back to Einstein's equations and we can show that this is a consistent answer to cosmology. It doesn't just invalidate Einstein's equations, it adds to it. It says there's this extra layer of zero point energy that explains mass, gravity, and inertia. 